Hi, welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. Today we're going to look at the Lockwood 001 and I'm going to install one for you and I'm going to show you a few tricks on how I install it. First of all, if you're looking at buying one of these, I advise you just get your local locksmith to install it. At least it's going to be installed properly and you're not going to have any troubles and you get a warranty with the lock. Second of all, if you go purchasing your own lock, you're most likely going to get the wrong model. And if you do get the wrong model, by the time the locksmith comes to your place to install it, they're then going to need to charge you for parts. If there's ever a problem with the lock, and the locks can have a problem, first of all, you, the locksmith is going to need to remove it and then send it back. You're going to be left without a lock if you supply the lock compared with if the locksmith supplies the lock. If the locksmith supplies the lock, they warrant the lock and the labour. If you supply the lock, they only warrant the labour. So, with that being said, we're going to look at the Lockwood 001 and we're going to install it. The last video we did on it um, was a bit rushed and we didn't show you the tricks and we didn't walk you through, so hopefully this one will be more informative. So let's go. Okay, so installing the Lockwood 001 for a metal frame. This is a metal frame. Checking, checking other people haven't installed it because whatever they do, we want to do the same. Can't readjust it. Tools we're going to use. Driver, impact driver, um, drill, side cutters. Uh, we have our packing plate screwdriver, tri-square, 32mm hole saw, 32 pencil, and that shall do. So height wise, my chest is about here, so belly button is about here, um, the rest is about here, so we wouldn't want to go any higher than here. So we're going to put it about here, which is the right height. checking yep that's the right height too high it won't comply too low it'll look silly so that's that's about the average height so we've done a line now we need to mark 60 millimeters so this is 60 millimeters now also take note there is a lip here this is higher than this part here so this is where we use a packing plate on this installation this brings the two surfaces to the same Okay, so now we've got a 60mm back set. I'm going to drill this with this 32mm hole saw. We are also going to use the box to collect all the swarf. There's our mark there. So the reason we do this is because we don't want to push all the way through the door. If we do, it'll make a big hole. So you drill half and then you find your center and you drill the other. Looking at the surface, the surface is three millimeters lower, so we're going to be using our packing plate to bring the two surfaces together. We're going to start off with the cylinder. Let's take this away. A little bit of grease, so do this over the paper. One screw, two screw. Take out two screws. Give it a shake. Here's your backing plate. Rotate this around, push this through, take out our screws. Here's the time to start to collect all this packaging. So here's our two cylinder screws. We're going to use them with our packing plate, cylinder. So we're going to put the cylinder through the front. Attach screws to screw it together. On the front here you want this Lockwood 
at the top. Looking through and you have to find a left and a right screw, putting the plate and the packing plate over the top. You have to put these screws to find them. So that's one. from this side I'm going to hold it in place lockwood centered coming around this side this is centered like it's square on this edge the holes all line up looking back from a distance just tightening them up not a hundred percent tight yet standing back looking checking it square Yep, once you're happy and it is square, let's tighten these up. Okay, now we have four wood screws. I like to start them off sometimes just by giving it a little center. But it's not necessary. Screws in. Make sure they're hundred percent flush also if you don't put them right in the middle this plate can move you don't want this plate to move when you screw the screws in four screws in now you need the keys and the side cutters so just checking it looks good up front, yes, keys in, rotate it, now we're doing a, a couple of millimetres, so give it a nip, turn around, give it a nip, let me measure that, so I normally cut that about 5 mil. that's about 5 mil. it shouldn't protrude through here. So with the key in, rotate it 180, put the hub on, bit of a burr there, put the hub on, that tail piece is not protruding which is good, check it turns freely, turns freely, let's put the lock body on, one screw, screw so when we put this on this has to be all the way back so if you don't tighten the screws and it doesn't go all the way back it can jam so we put it on give it a push backwards and when we when we tighten it up it should move backwards this edge will no longer be there very important So it's moved all the way flush. Nice and tight. Now we do the striker plate for this. For this I'll be using the hex screws. If you use drill bits they get blunt. These hex, hex screws are very good. So what I might do, I just, I just line it up by eye, so top, bottom, we want this centered, so there's enough gap here, enough gap here, and we want this part here about 5 millimeters off, so we want that on that line, we want it um, even gap there, and if you look, that's pretty much halfway down the word stainless. 
critical step. You only get one go at this. Same distance here, same distance here. Okay. So I looked, like to use hex screws, you can use a drill bit, but every time you drill in here, there's concrete in here, which means that you will wreck a drill bit. So by using these, you use them, and then you just throw them away. They also help if you've got bad screws or want to put extra screws in. So there's a lot of concrete in here. It has sort of panned up. So we'll need to pan that down straight. By going all the way, we're blowing the concrete out so the screws can get a good grip. Okay, hammer, let's bring these down. Three metal soft drilling screws. We're good there, we're good there. There still is a bit of room there. So what we'll be doing is making this feel stronger. So we'll be giving this a bang. then it will feel a lot more solid. One. Two. That's on there tight. Okay, and that's it. So, checking the dead latching function, it's pushing in halfway so it makes the latch go dead. Yes, latch is in there nicely. Yes, seeing how strong it feels on the door. Yes, checking the inside, one side hold back. Yes, hold back and lock off. Yes. Check dead latching function, so this will get locked. Check from this side. Automatic re release, yes. And check it from this side. So this is the new one with the laser engraving, as you can see. So if you do lose your keys, it's going to be a lot harder to pick the lock open. So always have a spare key cut because we'll probably have to drill this open or spend a lot of time picking it. So have a spare key for this type of lock. They're not as easy to pick. That's good. That's good. So give the keys to the customer. Also we're gonna check that the door closer has enough power to slam this automatically. And it does. Okay, thanks for watching.